All right, guys, this is my first video with you as new first years doing um, wood technology. And just to get started, and rather than doing a live class, I've kind of opted to do videos that I will post at the time of the class um, so that you look at them at the class time and do the work involved in them at the class time. But also those videos will be there for you if you need them down the track or later on in the year or whatever the case may be or if you just can't get to them because of wi-fi issues or whatever's happening so the first video i'm doing today or the first lesson i'm going to go over with you it's something that i haven't done with you before but that miss uh redmond when she was your student teacher she did with you so I'd, really this is revision but it's also you might hear something you haven't heard before so we're going to go back to the woodworking basics and the basics of a practical class and i suppose the first thing i'm going to do is the basics of the tri-square and why that is so important and how it is used and so on so straight away i have a tri-square here and the tri-square itself consists of four parts we have the blade which i'm holding now we have the stock we have the brass strip and we have the three rivets that hold the whole shebang together. Okay, generally the stock is made from rosewood, but if it was a light yellow color, it would be made from beech. Both very hard timbers, very hard wearing, very long lasting. So if it's dark, kind of darky, reddy, browny color, it's going to be rosewood. If it's a very light yellow, it's beech. Now, the first thing that you have to be able to do is you have to be able to draw that tri-square. Okay, and you'd be able to draw it and label it. Because one of the questions you will get might be to label the parts but another question you might get would be to actually draw the item and then label the parts so what i've started off here with is i've just got a blank page you may do the same um and we're going to keep that blank page in our folders well it won't be blank by the time you're finished but we're going to draw a tri square onto it and we're going to label it and we're going to talk to a few little bits talk about a few little bits within that so our tri-square, the first thing I want to talk to you about is this idea of drawing in 3D. Now, I know you did a certain amount of sketching already this year. Um, but what I'm more interested in is being able to not necessarily just draw me a letter L, which is kind of the shape of the tri-square if you look at it. But I want you to be able to not only draw that shape, but to draw it in 3D. So I'm going to give you the basics as to how we go about that. So in order to do that, and excuse me now a minute, I'll just turn myself so I can see the camera. Okay. In order to do that, if I look at the base here, or this section at least of the tri-square, I can see quite clearly that there are three lines or three edges that make up every quarter, okay? And if you were doing technical graphics, and later on in the year of technical graphics, you'd learn that that kind of a setup is what we call isometric projection, where we see what's crawled a crow's foot. Now, most of you will look at that and your brains will tell you, ah, oh, yeah, that's three sides of the tri-square, but it won't really transfer that or change it into a view that will enable you to be able to see it in 2D, but yet it looks 3D. So how do we do that when it comes to drawing it on a sheet? Well, I put that away for a moment and I say to myself, right, I need to draw it in 3D and the basis of 3D when it comes to drawing any kind of rectangular box, and this will occur as well for all the other shapes, is to draw a shape that is what, similar to what we call the crow's foot. So what I'm drawing is a light line to the right, light line to the left, and a vertical line, okay? And that line, or that edge, is going to represent that corner of my tri-square. So that edge, that corner, there it is. Then I start working on my proportions. So I say, right, if the tri-square is going to be this height, whatever this height might be, it's about two centimeters, I suppose, in reality, but this height. If I look at the width of my tri square here across the stock, the width, including the brass strip, because I'm going to come back to that in a minute, is about two and a half times the height. If you look at it, so if that was 20, this would most likely be 50 or thereabouts. So keeping my proportions the same, I'm looking at kind of, okay, what height did I put here? So it's about two and a half times that, so a little bit beyond it. Okay, so up about here. And I'm going to draw another vertical line. Then, and this is the key to all of these, and this is why you're going to start seeing me moving my page around. Every edge, actually, let me show you on this first. Every edge on the shape of the tool, they're all parallel edges. And if they're parallel in one view, they're going to be parallel in all which means when I come down here in order to finish, and by the way, I'm drawing lightly. I'm not drawing heavy. 
I'm going to go parallel to this edge. And the easiest way to do it is just hover your pencil across the line and kind of move your pencil in the same direction as the line that you already have. Then just move up your hand and go parallel. So that gives me my end section. I'm going to do the same over here. So I'm going to go parallel. So moving my hand in the direction of the line, I'm going to go parallel. There it is. Okay. So now I'm beginning to get a stock. So let's have a look at our tool again. All right. If I look again at this width that I have here, the stock is about three times that width, all right? So that width that I've already marked off, I have to go back about three times, one, two, three, to about here somewhere. So I need to extend on my line lightly. If everything is light until you are nearly finished, then you can't go too far wrong. Okay, and I'm going to put in a vertical line there because lines that are vertical stay vertical. That's the rule. Now, so far you'll notice that I haven't got near it with a rubber because I'm drawing lightly. I don't care if some of the lines are slightly inaccurate. It's a representation we're drawing. It's not a photograph. I could take a photograph of that on my phone this minute. That's not what we want. We want a representation. So what I'm doing now is I'm just completing the stock by saying, right, this line and this line, they must all be parallel to this edge as well. So I've already drawn that in parallel, but equally the lengths that are on them must be the same. And this is again where I move my page because it's a lot easier to draw a line when you move the page. Now, sometimes you might adjust your line at the stage. I just did there. Okay, so there's my stock. Now out of my stock, right? If I think of it turned this way, comes the blade. and some of you might try and draw the blade as if it is kind of invisible. Um, what do I mean by that? Almost as thin as a piece of paper, but it's not. In reality, it's about a millimetre thick, maybe less. Okay, so it does exist. It's a solid. It's there. I can hold it if it's there and I can hold it. It exists. And if I look at it, it comes out across the middle here of the stock. Okay, so I need to look at my stock and I need to kind of find a halfway mark. And I just draw another line parallel to the lines I already have. To be honest, the tri-square is the easiest one to start with. Because the tri-square is the one that contains all these lovely edges that are all nice and parallel. So it's relatively simple. Okay, now my blade, if I look at it, is slightly wider than the stock. So if my stock is already that wide, well, my blade needs to be a little bit wider. So it comes down to about here. And what happens at that stage? Well, it's parallel to the back edge. So there's my back edge. These are parallel, look at them. Nice parallel lines. So I say to myself, right, if it's parallel, it must go at this angle. So again, set up your angle. Off you go, parallel. Okay, keeping your hand at that angle, moving the page to make it easier for you. Now, the reality is the blade probably continues way more or way, are much further down along the page there, but I'm running out of page space and that's okay too. So I'm just gonna make it a slightly shorter blade. I'm gonna draw a little bit into my um, my margin. Now you'll notice as I got down there, I found it harder to stay parallel. So I need to straighten that up a little bit and same over here. Okay, and off it goes. Now here's the thing, the blade, am I gonna off the camera? I'm not even sure where I am, there we are. The blade has a thickness. That thickness might be very small, but it does exist. So I'm putting on a little thickness there and I'm going back down along the edge here, nice and parallel. Okay. Back parallel again. And there's my blade. So if you look at it, you might be able to see much on my screen just yet, but you can just about see the shape coming together. And it's kind of at this point now that I always start putting in a little bit of detail. And in a few minutes then I'm gonna come along with my black pen just to really highlight it. Your pencil will be enough for you, but the idea will be that you go over heavier. So we already said it contains a brass strip. The brass strip, again, if you look at it, they're all parallel. They're all just little rectangles on top of little rectangles. So it's parallel to what I already have. So I come in again, looking at it, that brass strip 
is about twice the thickness of the blade. So I'm looking at the thickness I allowed my blade and I'm just coming in that amount and I'm just going parallel again, lightly. You can go for one straight line if you want. Or you can do it in little dashes, it doesn't really matter. The idea is to come up with a representation of the object so that if somebody looks at your sketch, they know it's a tri-square. They mightn't say it's a photograph, but they do know it's a tri-square. So there's my brass strip gone in. Okay, next thing that goes in then, and this is probably the hardest bit, is the three rivets. So I find the easiest way to do that is to just kind of, first of all, put in three little teeny tiny little X's just to kind of represent where those little circles are going to go and the reality is if you look at this if i turn it straight up to the camera they're perfect circles but if i tilt it and i'm going to just tilt it here slightly those circles will eventually look elliptical like an ellipse which for those of you that aren't doing tg similar to an oval so i'm going to come back here and i'm just going to sketch in not too perfect doesn't have to be three little ovals okay this one's probably a little bit flat but i can fix that all in a minute now i've all my detail gone in so this is the bit that you better not be afraid of or don't be afraid of i'm going to go over now with black pen following all the lines i have while remembering that i don't expect it to be perfect i want it to be a sketch a representation of the object i want somebody to be able to look at it and say oh yeah that's a tri-square Okay, so I'm literally going line by line, following the lines I already have there. Bit by bit. I might be going off the camera a little bit there now, I don't mind. Basically, I'm just turning the page to make it easier for myself. It's much easier always to sketch in this direction. Because that's the way your hand would naturally move, unless you're left-handed, which means you're going the other direction. Either way, though, you still would find it easier just to turn the page, no matter whether you're left-handed or right-handed. Okay, so getting there, there's where I go off the page a little bit, that's okay. Bit down, following my lines, following my edges, keeping in mind, not looking for perfection, looking for shape, looking for people to be able to recognize it. Put in my little ovals. Okay, now, so far, so good. I'm just looking at it myself, overview. Let me just see where I am on the camera. Let's move it up there a little bit. Um, next thing, I need to add a little bit of detail. Now, hopefully you will like doing this. I love doing this because at the moment, I just have a few boxes, right? But I now need to make that look like a tri-square. So I'm getting out the colouring pencils, which I've just realised need to sharpen. I don't think I have a sharpener. Okay, so ideally you need a brown and yellow and all of those colours. Looking for a sharpener. Now it doesn't matter, I'll use it as it is. Okay, so I have got brown here. And what I'm gonna do with the brown is I'm gonna make it look like the end of the piece has wood grain going on, right? Which basically means drawing in random curves and lines. That's really what that means. Putting in a knot here and there, doesn't need to be perfect. It's not real wood, but here's the reality. Doesn't matter whether it's real wood or not because whether it is or it isn't, every piece of wood is different. So every, it doesn't have to be the exact same in every one. So that's my timber effect gone in. Then my brass strip, I'm gonna go in with the yellow for that, or orange, whatever you have, it doesn't matter. A color anyway, just to make it stand out. Even if you went with red, wooden box match is fine. So I'm just gonna highlight it as best I can. Okay, and then the brass strip itself is generally a grey 
are a metally color, almost a black. But what I like to do when I'm doing blacks is I usually do a kind of a blue because there's almost a blue sheen to it. It doesn't matter what color it is. It's that the object looks like, or the sketch looks like the object you want it to be. So I'm going in with a blue. As I say, it doesn't particularly matter. Now what I will do is make the sides a bit heavier so that they just kind of stand out a little bit more. One thing I will say about shading though or coloring, because really we're shading, we're not coloring, you were coloring in primary school, now you're shading, is that try to have all the, for want of a better word, the grain going in the one direction. Now, even though I have my timber lines in there, it's still white. So this is where I go in with, I don't know, a yellow or an orange or something just to make it look a bit timbery. Now this could do with sharpening this pencil, but I'll just use the edge of it for now. And it will be okay. Okay, there we go. The rivets are brass. Bit of yellow. Bit of yellow. And then the final bit, one of my favorite bits. It looks like nothing until you put it sitting somewhere. What do I mean by that? I mean the object needs to kind of be sitting on a surface or on an edge. So what I normally do is I just take another random color and I just Sketch around the object. It just makes it look more real, like it's sitting on a surface or something. And that's fine because you can write on that anyway again in a minute. But there it is, sitting on a surface. All right, and there's your practice on shading, because that's what that is. Okay, now, that's great, little sketch done. Happy days, but that's not all we want to know, right? We need to know the parts. So first of all, over here, this guy is the stock, S-T-O-C-K. We have stock on a lot of the tools. We have a stock on our tri-square, we have it on our T-square if you do T-G, we have it on the marking gauge, we have it on the mortise gauge, and a few more that I won't come to my mind this minute. This guy down here is what we call the blade. Okay, that's our blade. These are our rivets. Rivets are what hold the object together. Okay, actually I should have put that arrow in there. Right now we fix that. There we go. Doesn't matter where your two arrows. Okay, so rivets. And there are three of those. Two would mean that if one gave him loose, the whole thing would loose, loosen and it would no longer function correctly. And one obviously would, wouldn't be right at all. This guy down here then is our brass strip. And its function is protection. It's to keep the shape square, it's to keep the share square, it's the square, um, sorry, it's to keep it at 90 degrees and it's to keep it from wearing away, okay? Usually our timber will either be rosewood or beech. This is rosewood, beech would be yellow. Okay. Um, did I put anything out there? No, except the probably most important message, which is that the angle in there generated by the tri-square is always 90 degrees. Always, right? Okay, uh, why is that? Or where does it get the name? Well, if we look at a square, if 
something is square, what does it mean? It means all the angles are 90 degrees. So that's kind of where the name comes from. The try for square business means to check for square. So the word is try square, right? And what that really means is to try. So you're using the try square to check if something is square, to try for square. which really means to try for 90 degrees. Let's put 90 degrees there in brackets, okay? Because you know a square is 90 degrees. Try for square, try for 90 degrees. So T-R-Y, not T-R-I. You'll hear some people thinking that the try square is spelled T-R-I and it's not. Okay, so to try for square, 90 degrees, square is 90 degrees. Um, I don't think I'm leaving anything out there. X square, mm -hmm. No, I'm relatively happy with that. I suppose the blade is usually stainless steel. Okay, so you might be wondering what do you need to know from the sheet? Well, the first thing is that um, you need to know the labels, the parts of the tri-square, but you also need to know what it's made from, and what each piece is for. So the brass strip is there in order to add protection. It keeps the angle at 90 degrees. If that 90 degree, if that square loses its 90 degree angle, it's effectively useless because it allows us to mark lines on timber at 90 degrees. So actually, that's probably the most important thing that I'm really forgetting at the end. So what is it used for? question mark because that's very important so what is the tri square used for well one to check for square we've already had that but it's really to mark lines on a piece of timber project maybe Mark lines on a piece of timber at 90 degrees. Now, I will ask you that in second year during your tests. I will ask you that at the end of first year during your tests. You'll be asked that in your junior search. What is the 90 degrees used for? What is the tri square used for? All right, so that's that for now. What I want you to do with that sheet is I want you to reproduce your own copy. I will scan a copy myself and attach it to Google Classroom. Um, and to be honest, it's a little bit of revision and I'm hoping to move on in the next few days. I want to do a lesson um, revising how you use face side and face edge and why that's important and just showing you how to mark out a piece of timber again. It might not be something you can do at home at the moment, but certainly it's something we can revise and we can look at on the video. So I hope that's okay for now. Thank you for watching.